Welcome to the Wearables in the Wild Hiking Hackathon. We're gonna give you a tour of our entire base camp slash hacking studio in the wild, um, where we're building all kinds of gizmos and gadgets for trying to explore and understand nature. And there's a lot that goes into trying to put together the infrastructure for being able to, to build electronics and play with all these digital devices in the wild. And so we're going to show you all the cool stations and all the things that we have accessible to us at this amazing place. So one of the first things is just this gorgeous river over here. Um, when you're in the wild, you need lots of water. We're all humans. We need uh, to eat and drink. Um, it's a great source of that, but it also helped us uh, test out some new forms of energy. We had a fire hose that we were trying to get hydraulic uh, electrical power out of. Um, so we were able to do some cool tests with that, and that was pretty awesome. Over here you can see a lot of our sleeping quarters. There's the hammocks. Um, from being in rainforests a lot, I've been starting to camp uh, in uh, sleeping hammocks, tent hammocks, uh, because it keeps me off the ground in case there's flooding, uh, and it's very light and compact, and you can really just shove it into a bag. You don't have to worry about busting up any kind of poles or anything like that. As we go further into the camp, uh, you can start seeing more of the amazing magic that we have going on. Uh, so there's some gizmos hanging up. It's always good to get stuff off the ground, so hanging surfaces are a big uh, desire around here. We have a gravity-powered uh, water pump, so we usually pump our water in order to clean it because of any kinds of weird viruses or bacteria that might be living there, but it can get really tiring on your arms to be doing it all day. So we have a gravity-fueled system. You just load it in, let it fill up all day. Over here you can see some more of our projects. This is a EthoVest behavioral logging vest that's been designed uh, that we're gonna try to test out later. And right along it, you can see our first prototype for a portable workstation. Uh, when you're in the wild, it's very hard to find a nice flat surface that's up where you are for building and prototyping things. Before, we've just had to have mats and sit on the ground, you're hunched over and you don't have any light, and it can be really tricky to get the kind of, uh, to be able to be working in that position for a really long time. So that can be tricky. And you can see, this has been serving us really well. It's just some webbing straps and some card, uh, like a fiberboard slats that we've put in between it. We got some ideas for improvements, uh, but so far it's doing great. You can see uh, our friend Hannah sent us this wearable portable studio. So during the day and during the, the hike in, this thing folds up into a little backpack. Uh, but while we're sitting here hacking at the hacker lab, uh, it turns into a great little studio that holds all of our tools, um, even helps light up the place, all of our spools of thread, gives us quick access to lots of different gizmos that we need, and stores all of the handy little devices that we could use or want. Importantly, there's even an e-waste bag um, out here. So when we're busy uh, building things, soldering things, snipping off little bits of plastic, it can get really uh, gross to start just leaving these bits of metal and plastic all over this gorgeous wilderness. So even though you can, you can get used to doing that in the lab, out here we need to be very careful about putting all these little bits into this e-waste bag. You can see Caitlin over here was working on another project, building kind of a wearable Raspberry Pi that has a thermal camera on it. Um, and up here you can see we've made a fabric printed uh, reference for critters and also electronics. So it can be tricky sometimes, especially if you're tired and hungry, be like, what exactly was Kirchhoff's second law? Um, or how do you build a boost converter circuit? So we put together in this first version of this, a lot of the basic ideas um, and a lot of the quick reference things for beginners, like what's connected in a breadboard, to more advanced things, like how to hook up a stepper motor, or how to build um, different RC circuits uh, for debouncing uh, signals that you can get. And we also tossed in just lots of fun things about uh, insects, firefly patterns, different types of orders of insects, what are the sensory ranges of different animals, uh, chemical, hearing, um, visual frequencies that they can detect. Moving on, you can see more and more storage space. Uh, these tear-proof bags have come really in handy for large bulky items like lots of wire. 
that you can store um, and then hang up on trees or once you start moving over to the main packing tent uh, you can see we've hung up some zip lines across for even more storage. So we got some multimeters there, uh, hanging right next to the socks that are drying. This hacking tent is one of the coolest spaces I've ever seen for building electronics out in the wild. We had to assemble it in the middle of the rain and it came out perfectly. We had these four trees around us and we happened to find this one tree. This tree is actually completely dead but it still has its root ball on the bottom. We managed to fit it perfectly up there. And we have this huge cavernous space that when you're used to building and hacking electronics just underneath your single tiny tarp yourself, this feels like a luxurious mansion for building and hacking stuff. Um, below it, we've created um, a nice little work table where we can store a lot of electronics. Again, it's just a lot easier to pick stuff up. Um, when it's a little bit more closer to your height um, it also keeps things dry a lot of things are sensitive and you want to keep them off the ground in order to keep them dry even if they're under a tarp uh, so lots of great goodies like that we have matt over here um, programming uh, a bunch of the different microcontrollers we're using for the projects the computer is a really valuable resource we only got one of them and it's got limited power so the programming doesn't tend to be what you typically do in uh, your normal life uh, back at home where you can just kind of lazily code, debug, code, debug. Uh, Matt and everyone uh, coding on here, we're kind of in a mad rush just to, to get the code on there before all the batteries die and we run out. Um, a couple more just spaces that we got. Um, the light is beautiful in this lovely mm -hmm. forest. Uh, we have Jeanette here. She's Please sewing up some sensors that are going to go onto some leaves and kind of an installation where you can capacitively touch uh, and sonify a bunch of the different plants growing around here and so she's sewing these together and if you look around the edge we have a couple more tent situations more traditional tents uh, more hammock tents more clothes drying areas some of the projects that we finished that are laying out to try to not get them completely harvested uh, for parts. That can often happen. There's the back off bear device. It's a bear warning uh, system that you can attach to your tent that uh, Jeanette and Hugh designed earlier. Um, and then another thing that's really handy in one of these situations is trying to capture what you did. And a good, really lightweight tripod uh, makes it nice because sometimes you can always hang a GoPro up in a tree but having just a tripod that you can put absolutely anywhere is pretty essential, and, but they can be very heavy, so you want a nice lightweight one. If you go over here, we have more reference charts, and then you can see kind of the main social area. We have a fire pit, we have the kitchen, um, we have a bunch of seating. Seating is very important for just hanging out, your back starts cramping up, everyone's had hard days hiking around. Uh, you want something to be able to relax a bit more easily. And so, this is nice, the fire's nice. We're even trying to harvest energy out of the fire itself. We're very energy hungry. And so, instead of just carrying tons of batteries all the time, we want to find more renewable ways to deal with that. And then finally, you have the kitchen, where we have all the food that we're eating for the entire week we're out here. We have to package it all up at the end of the night because unlike any of the previous hiking hacks, we actually have to worry about bears here. And so we have to send it all up far away um, up in the tree where hopefully bears aren't going to be um, climbing up to get it and, and yeah so that's one of the big challenges and it's just a lovely gorgeous camp full of all kinds of surprises interesting insects and really amazing talented motivated people so it's, it's been great Good, I've just about run out of battery. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs>